Hello, everyone. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute. Welcome to Preston's Ponderings. We are currently involved in a study of Matthew 16, 27, and 28, where our Lord said, The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and shall reward every man according to his works. And verily I say unto you, there are some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom with power and great glory. This incredible passage has perplexed scholars and laymen alike for literally centuries. In one of our earlier segments, we explored the significance and the relationship between Matthew 16, 27, and 28, the fact that it's drawn from the Old Testament prophecies of the coming of the Lord in judgment to establish the kingdom, and Jesus' emphatic statement in Matthew 5, 17 and 18, in which he said, Do not think that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth passes away, not one jot, not one tittle shall pass from the law until it is all fulfilled. We began just ever so briefly to investigate the significance of that, and I made the following argument. Jesus said, not one single iota, not the crossing of an I, not or excuse me, the dotting of an I, or the crossing of a T, of the Torah, the Old Covenant, the Law of Moses, would pass away until all of it was fulfilled. The prophecies of the coming of the Lord in judgment to establish the kingdom are found in the Old Testament. Therefore, until the Lord came in judgment to establish the kingdom, the Old Covenant, none of it, not a single dotting of the I, not a single crossing of a T, could pass until the Lord came in judgment and established the kingdom. Now, here's what's incredible, as I pointed out earlier, but I want to reemphasize this in this segment. Here's what's incredible. All three futurist eschatologies say the law of Moses has been done away with. Thomas Ice, in the book Prophecy Watch, says that Christ has fulfilled the law of Moses, taking it completely out of the way. All millennialists and post-millennialists alike agree and admit and argue the old, co the old covenant, the law of Moses, has been done away. And yet, strangely enough, you've just got to catch the power of this. All three futurist eschatologies then turn around and appeal to the Old Testament that abrogated an old, old covenant, you know, for their expectation and prophecies of a yet future coming of the Lord. Now listen to me very carefully. If the Old Covenant has been annulled, if the law of Moses has been abrogated, then that means all of it has been abrogated. Not some of it, not a little bit of it, not even just most of it. Jesus said, not one jot, not one tittle shall pass from the law until it is all fulfilled. Now, very quickly, I want to make a point on this. We are told by all three futurist eschatologies that when they say, okay, the law of Moses has been done away with, what they really mean by that is that the ceremonial laws, the laws of sacrifice have been done away. And therefore, they say, well, since the ceremonial law has been done away with, we don't have to offer sacrifice. Well, here's the problem with that. The ceremonial laws of the Old Covenant included Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Harvest. Those were ceremonial, sacrificial feast days, but they foreshadowed and anticipated the Day of Judgment, the coming of the Lord to complete the Atonement, and... The resurrection. How can we argue, therefore, that the ceremonial aspect of the old law has been done away with and yet still look forward to the day of judgment, coming of Christ to complete the atonement, and the resurrection when those things were foreshadowed in that ceremonial sacrificial law? Remember, 
Jesus said, not one jot, not one tittle shall pass from the law until it is all fulfilled. If you say the ceremonial aspect of the law has been done away with, then the feast days, which were ceremonial and sacrificial, were done away. But if those ceremonial and sacrificial feast days were annulled, then either eschat the eschatological promises themselves were annulled or, or they were fulfilled in the first century. We'll have a whole lot more to say about this on the flip side. Thanks for joining us for Preston's Ponderings. We'll see you later.